Hi, welcome to Ace Teachers Online, a series of tutorial videos for students. My name is Kaj, and today we're going to do a question on Faraday's Paradox. Your question is appearing on your screen right now. This question is from MERS and Generators. We're looking at a situation where Faraday's law doesn't seem to apply as we've learned in the past. On your diagram, you'll see a setup of Tilly's experiments. You have a circuit with a galvanometer in it and a switch currently in position one. It will soon switch to position two, at which point we don't register any voltage on our galvanometer, even though there's been a change in the area and hence a change in flux. We're going to try and solve this paradox by considering two parallel current carrying conductors, which is shown in your diagram number two. So our question wants us to consider two parallel current carrying conductors. Now you can see on the board, one of these is fixed and the other is free to move. Let's consider the magnetic field produced by the fixed wire. I'm going to use the right hand grip rule, my thumb pointing in the direction of the current. We can see my fingers are going into the page on the side of the freely moving wire. So let's draw that in now. So my freely moving wire is sitting in a magnetic field which is going into the page. We know when we have a wire in a magnetic field it's going to experience a force given to us by the motor effect. We can work out the direction of the force using the right hand palm rule. I point my thumb down the page following the current, my fingers into the page following the magnetic field and you can see the force is to the right. Since my wire is free to move, it's going to start moving across towards the fixed wire. So let's draw that in. We can say that our wire has been displaced by a distance of S. Let's now consider the work that's been done here. We know that work is equal to force times the change in displacement, in this case, S. Let's consider the force. We have a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field experiencing a force. We know that that formula is F equals bill sine theta. Since theta is 90 degrees, we can assume that sine theta is equal to one. Let's substitute that into our formula. Having a look at our diagram, we can see that L times S gives us the area of displacement. So we can write the change in area is equal to L times the change in horizontal displacement. So let's put that into our formula. Finally, we know that flux is equal to magnetic field strength B times area. So change in flux is equal to magnetic field strength times change in area. So let's put this last step into our formula. So work is equal to current times the change in flux. That's going to be equation number one. Now if we think back to our prelim physics, we know that voltage is defined as the work done per unit charge. So essentially, we can rearrange this to come up with a new expression for work. W is equal to V times Q. We also know from our prelim physics that current is equal to the change in charge over the change in time. Okay, so current, sorry, charge is equal to current times change in time. We'll sub that into our formula. We now have two expressions for work, so we can equate the two together. We've got I times change in flux on one side, and VI times change in time on the other. If we cancel out I on both sides and rearrange our formula, we're going to get that voltage is equal to change in flux 
over change in time. And if you're familiar with our modus and generators content, you'll recognize this as the formula for Faraday. So we've derived Faraday's law. In doing so, we need to realize that work cannot equal zero. If work was to equal to zero, then looking at equation two, voltage would equal to zero, current would equal to zero, or delta T would equal to zero. If any of these were equal to zero, we would have no current flowing in our circuit, and hence Faraday's law would not be applicable. What this means is that Faraday's law is only possible if we actively do work in order to create a change in flux. In Tilly's experiment, if we assume the switches to be frictionless, we actually are doing no work, and hence no EMF was registered on the galvanometer. This is really important because it means that current is only induced when we do a work to change flux, and therefore we maintain the law of conservation of energy. Hence, Faraday's paradox is solved because no work is being done and hence no EMF is being induced. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed that. Click here for a link to our previous video, click here for a link to our next video, and see below for a link to our website.